right. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View. I'm your host, Erica Bird McCall, because my last name is McCall. And we're back with another episode. I just love when my guests chuckle every time I do that. It's just so fun. Because <laughs> you are crazy, really. <laughs> we're back with another episode, y'all. If you guys don't know who I am, I have just finished five years of playing professional basketball. I'm out here training in Phoenix, about to go leave for Spain in about a month. Super hyped for that. And I started this podcast just to be able to give my guests their flowers, to be able to entertain people, educate and entertain people on what being a professional basketball player is all about. And my guest here knows all about that, y'all. I have a freaking legend on the pod today. I was so hyped that she was able to do it on, on a last second notice. So I'm, I'm super hyped. Everyone, welcome on the one and only Shavante <laughs> Zealous. Welcome on Z. Yo, 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 Birdie <laughs> Bird, what up? Z was my teammate last year when we played for the Mystics, and I absolutely loved her. Her, her presence, her personality, her energy is just something that you need around you. You need to have on a team, and that's, I'm sure, one of the reasons why she's been so successful throughout her years in the league but welcome on Z thank you thank you thank you again for being on appreciate you birdie bird anytime dog <laughs> show <laughs> always well let me uh read your bio it's pretty darn amazing um when I was doing my research I'm like okay Z big time we got a, <laughs> we got a WBA champion on the pod I freaking love it oh me Yes, sir. All right. Let me let me go ahead and, and, and read your bio. All right. So she was drafted 11th to the Detroit Shock. We'll get into that in 2009 because the best, the best. Y'all, I played with a Detroit Shock player. I, I didn't think that was possible until I found the out best, last year baby. she played for the Shock. <laughs> <laughs> she was named to the all-rookie team in 2009, a WMA champion with the Indiana Fever in 2012. In 2013, she was a WNBA All-Star and also named the most or also named the most improved player in 2013. Like super, Back super, up. super dope, man. That's that's <laughs> tough. And of course, because we are an all-inclusive podcast, we talk about overseas. She's played in Turkey, Latvia. Israel and Croatia. She's a Latvian league champ, a Turkish league champ. The list goes on. Z. Yeah. Freaking, freaking literal all star, literal champ. Thank you for being on. No that's doubt, dog. That's, that's, that's a dope you bio. Me on here, dog. For real. Hey, I, like <laughs> I said, I'm here to give you a flat. Before, before we started this podcast, I was like, people need to understand the legend that Shavante Zealous is. And I don't think people really recognize that. And so that's what we're going to do today. Bad, bad, bad. You know, sometimes we we hide under the rug, but we still out here. You know hey, how man. it is. I feel it. I'm, <laughs> I'm here to give you your flowers and, and to hype you up and just to, to lift you up. And you're going to just be smiling this whole podcast. So I appreciate you, though. Appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's get into it. Well, before we start the whole interview process, we got a game. I like to do my corny game. So this game here, no other is named The Legend of Zealous. You get it because there's a game called The Legend of Zelda. A video oh game. really yes oh, okay. it's a popular video game so you are the legend of zealous here you go All this right. must be some stanford <laughs> stuff you got going on on here for real <laughs> some shit you didn't got from stanford or something i know this is my, my <laughs> nerd my nerd coming out <laughs> yes i already know <laughs> they led all right first question i'm super hype about this one Favorite person to talk trash to because you be talking some trash. You talk trash to me. I don't even talk trash, and you made me talk trash to you when we played in Turkey this summer or this uh this season, and I enjoyed it. So, who's your favorite person to talk trash to? Hey, listen, the one person I think I can talk trash to and it'd be fun is Diana because I know like the competitor in her. When you talk trash, I feel like that shit wake her up a little bit. Sorry yeah. if I cuss a little bit too much. Nah, you good. Um, but it's ain't for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk trash to her, it makes the game a little bit more interesting because you know you're just gonna bring the best out of her. Yeah. And you know what you bring, so it just makes the game a little bit more fun to me. That's a that's a dope answer. And Diana is one of the you up there too for the best. Yeah, listen, trash talking players DT out there to death. Love DT, love her. I'm not a trash talker, but like I said, when I played against you, you, you just, it, it, it's fun. It just brings, it like, you, it, fun, it, it right? makes it right. fun. It makes you want to just go out, like, compete, like, I got to show her. Fun. Like, yeah. people too boring nowadays. I'm just like, let's, 
you bring the competitive out of people because then you can really see like who really yeah. like gonna go for you or who got really gonna dog. shine to that rock. That yeah, dog like him. you feel me? So why not? And I got it in me, so I'm gonna bring the best <laughs> out of whoever I guard. But I'm playing a one, two, three, four, five. Hey, I feel <laughs> it. And you did be playing one exactly. through five. You be literally playing every position. Exactly. exactly. She's versatile. Hey, she's versatile, folks. Versatile. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Turkey, next question: What's your favorite Turkish food? Do you play in Turkey? How many? How many years have you played in Turkey? Man, I played in Turkey like eleven years, maybe twelve. Wow. Yeah, I've been there for forever. But yeah. I mean, I feel like I got a, I got a lot of dishes. Well, mostly sweets, but like, I have a lot of dishes. Like, I love their chicken, they rice. I never taste anybody rice better do, as better as Turkish. Turkey. Really good. Like rice. the way they rice is made is probably the best I ever had. Um, they soups, what is tomato, chicken, mushroom, magic, lentil, like hands down the best soups. Um, they desserts. Obviously, everybody know about the baklava. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. the kudafe that's you know come from Hatay. Um, so yes. like bread with cream cheese yep. and it's like hot, like fire. Sweet and a little um, savory. Yep. I love Sajuk. That's based out of Kaisri. So for all the folks that ain't been to Turkey, you go to these cities. Kaisri got the best Sajuk. It's kind of like sausage, but it's fire when you make it crispy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the foods I kind of gravitate to. Yeah, yeah, you know how it is, bird over there. Like easy right now over there so <laughs> that's like my go-to for real for real really over there right now you know i like um, the, but obviously the, the food fire over there they do have good food. hungarian food is my favorite but i do enjoy turkish meatballs yeah i, I don't even think i really got into the meatballs like that because kufti kufti something like that how you pronounce it yeah i'm just yeah. i'm just not into the meatballs you know so <laughs> i'm not <laughs> And that's okay. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I gravitate to the stuff that I eat. So that's what I'll be on. <laughs> Say no, that's how it would be. You next know? question. Next question. <laughs> this might be the funniest podcast we have uh, today. All right. <laughs> Favorite WNBA vet. Z, you played with some, like, some goats of the league. Who was your favorite vet to play with? Dude, shit, do I have to name one? You can name a couple. Go ahead. Name a couple. Shit, I feel like my Detroit team, everybody. <laughs> talk your talk. I can name everybody on there from the coaching staff, from Cheryl Reeves, Rick Mahorn, Bill Lambeer. I was with Deanna Nolan, who's my idol. Mm. So being drafted by them, I was just like, oh, shit. Like, I'm really playing with my idol right now. That's tough. Um, Katie Smith. Carol Braxton, Planet Pearson, like I mean, Nikki Teasley was on my team. Like, I mean, I'm with the vet Taj McWilliams. Like, I'm with the vet, so I name my whole Detroit team. Um, Catch, Ebony Hoffman. Um, who else was on? Katie Douglas, my Indiana team. Like, so for me, you know, the great set like Linda yeah. and Stephanie White. I had like. Um, some amazing like teammates, even you know, playing in Seattle, playing in, even in DC, you know, um it was good. So I think for me, just the my few top 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 is my Detroit teammates. Like yeah. they made me honestly who I was today. So they yeah. forever will be like top dogs for me. You Nobody are li- like me. the the list you just dropped is iconic. If like you it was are, crazy. If crazy. you are a uh, there's a fan we have. I think I think her her name is Detroit Shock Water Girl on Twitter, and she's about to go wild. Yo, listen. When she was at, she already know at the palace. We had the palace rocking too. Mm. A lot of people don't know about the palace because now it ain't the palace no more. Yeah. We used to have the palace rocking when we was there. Like that's why I said my whole team in Detroit is like my top top of whoever I all play with. It's crazy. I play with some dogs. And even like not even just playing with them, like playing against like yeah. the Lisa Leslie's, the Alicia Milton's, the Cappies, the DT's, like 
I mean, I could just go on with the list of who I played against alone. I could just say was like who like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I looked up to. Like it was just crazy when I played. Like for real. That's when that's tough. Because sidetrack, that's when Sacramento was still in. So mm-hmm. Rebecca Brunson and then was Tisha. Like we could go back, back, back. Back. Oh, yeah, that's back. just a little few right there. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because we had this quiz in DC where we had to list the amount of teams that um, were expansion teams. So we had to start like from the beginning. And then if there was expansion team, we had to list like, okay, Detroit started with Tulsa. Then it was Tulsa to, to Dallas. Yeah. And Z killed the test because none of us were there. And you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't remember these teams. Like this, I- It was all the old school teams. <laughs> You were living like it. it was lit back then. I ain't gonna even lie. Hey, you, it was lit you, back you gotta then. you gotta rock a Detroit shock like just like a jersey one day. Like you gotta come out like you know what? I still got my rookie jersey, so I might pop that thing out. out. I ain't gonna it. lie to you. That'd be tough. Like I really might. For real, you, for real. And nobody can find a Detroit shock jersey no more. And, and you got one. Absolutely so. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. If just you do this, it's really a throwback. This conversation alone just shows the legend you are <laughs> just this conversation alone just this Listen. <laughs> well i was gonna ask you what's your favorite WNBA team you played for but I, I think you you answered it right there yeah detroit hands down yeah. detroit but you only played with them for a year correct and yeah and it was and my best yeah yeah that's all you needed top. and probably would have still stayed there if it was still in a, like if they were still in the league and then yeah. relocate and all that yeah shenanigans that happened with that but yeah for yeah. sure We'll get into that. Okay, then last question, since we that was a quick one. Okay, this was a fun one. It's 2010, so it's the year after your rookie year. If you could choose one teammate to play with for the rest of your career till now, from your draft class, who would it be? For me, wow. Um so what's, from my what's name? Class? Yeah, what's name somebody from your draft? I, I looked it up. So you had like you had Angel, you had my I sister had Angel, is with I had you. Christy. Yep. I had um Marissa Coleman. I had mm-hmm. DB, your sister. Yep. Kia Vaughn, me, um, Ashley Walker. Mm. So like for my class, should I say Angel? Okay. Okay. Angel. Why Angel? She was a go-getter, and two, I knew she was a competitor like me because we played against each other so many times in mm-hmm. college because we was a part of that. The, the real Big East, can I say that again? <laughs> Go the ahead. real Big East. Not this made-up shit that's going on now with teams going to the Big Ten and all, the real Big East when we was there. Louisville and Pitt, like, just competing against her, I know she had the same type of energy, the same type of dog in, like, mm-hmm. me. Um, and just going against her, like we both set out our, you know, freshman year yep. and then those, like those years lean up. I feel like we both had something to prove. Mm-hmm. So when you get two dogs like that, that feel like they got some shit to prove and they on the same mission, ain't no way you stopping it. Yeah, Cause we got right the talent and we got the heart. We going to outdo everything. So yeah. for me, it definitely would have been angel for sure. Great answer. Great yeah. answer. I like that. I would love to see y'all on a team together. That would really fun. That would have been lit for sure. What could have been? Well, we never know. What could be? Exactly. We still what got could time. Be? Exactly. We still got time. We sure do. Because I, <laughs> I ain't putting them down yet. I'm still hey. out here. Hey, tell the people. Tell the people. <laughs> tell the people. All right. Well, that was fun. That was a fun little game. And I felt like I went down a WBA little history lesson right there. Like, for sure. Like that was, that was, that's what's up. That was pretty fun. All right. For sure, let's, for sure. Let's start the interview. Let's go back to your Detroit shop days. Uh-huh. Um, and you were there for, like we said, just for one season, you played with, with all these legends. Um, right. Just kind of take us through like what your rookie year was like, because I, when I was doing my research, I didn't know that you had got drafted the year after they won a championship so what was yep. that environment like um it was crazy honestly when I first got there um you know coming out of pit I was kind of the shit I ain't gonna like I ain't trying to sound cocky or nothing but you know how you come out of college yeah and you feel like 
you on top of the world. I got yeah. most improved in the Big East. First team, first team, first team, you know, up there. So when you get into the league as a rookie, low key, you really think you like, all right, I'm the shit still. But man, when I tell you, I got woken up so quick when I got Detroit. Um, I never forget the practice that I had there and my first, like we, you know, we was shooting, you know, you got to do the little first little workouts and all that and all that. So we first got there, did the workouts, killing the workouts. I'm like, oh, all right, all right, I'm good. So then I, like the practices, I was like, for me, my first practice, I felt like I was like starstruck because I'm like, damn, you know, growing up, honestly, I was a track athlete. I never thought I would be drafted by any WNBA team. It was always like second nature for me. So when I got um, drafted to the shock, I was like, oh, like what? Because I'm like, damn, I'm really about to play with my idol, somebody I really like model my game out there in a sense. So, you know, got there, got there. Um, I would say like my third practice, we started scrimmaging because, you know, preseason games come for us early in the W. Yep. So we started scrimmaging, scrimmaging, scrimmaging. Man, i never forget goddamn Planette Pearson. So um, Planette Pearson, we was practicing and I was guarding Deanna Nolan at the time too. So when I was guarding her, she like was so quick. I was trying to chase her, came off a goddamn flare screen, but who hit me was Planette. I was like, oh shit. And her exact words was, yeah, welcome to the WNBA. Ooh. I was like, wait, what? She was like, yeah, nigga, like pretty much, yeah, welcome to the WNBA. This shit ain't what you, th- like, it ain't all sweet what you think it is. Because coming out of pitch, you know, you think you on top of the world. Yeah. It wasn't like that. So I was like, <clears throat> bet, like, in the sense, <laughs> okay. So after that, how that was, I was like, all right, I see how this is now. So I'm going to have to get, like, like active. Mm-hmm. So ever since then, ever since then, mm-hmm. then when practice, it was kind of a down practice for me. And Cheryl Reeves, I'll never forget, was the only coach to make me cry ever in my career playing basketball. Mm-hmm. And she just was like, you coming here thinking you the shit because you was this at pit, this ain't that. If you want to last in this league, we're going to have to bring the best out of you. So we're going to push you to the ultimate high. She's like, you're going to stay on defense the whole practice. And, you know, in the league, when you go in the Deanna's, the Katie Smith's, Alexis Warren Buckles on my team, Nikki Teasley, you like, what the fuck? And it just so happened I was always matched up with Tweety. Like, on every time, like, we shifted, I was always her partner. So I was just like, this shit ain't real life. But, like, I never drink, I've never sweated as much as I did. I never, like, like, it was probably, like, one of my struggle days, but it actually made me who I am today. Yeah. Like, the amount of shit I went through just from, like, the mental toughness, the building me up, the the confidence level that I got right now is all because of what I went through in Detroit. And yeah. it was a plus for me. I was, I'm actually lucky. I, you know, sometimes you got to go through certain shit like that you know, Thanks. to build who you is as a player. So for me, that's just what it was. So I'll ever, I'll for always be grateful for my time in Detroit, for sure. Facts. Sheesh. I can imagine those practices are like, like, uh, then the them dog practices, like, now in the league, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, college was easier. I'm trying I mean, to college, get in I mean, on college, college other was phone. harder. Hold Go on, ahead. Bert. I'm trying to get in on my other phone. Can you let me in? Because this one about to yeah. die. And hey, I don't want to... All right, there you are. Let me take this one out. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that phone was about Two to phones. die. But um, yeah, like it 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 was just yeah, my time in Detroit was it built me who I am today for sure. Yeah. And I was, what I was saying I was saying like no lie, like I feel like those practices like what they what they show like them 
90 like early 2000s practice like when they was just like you was go getters yeah. yes didn't take no yes. smack yeah it was all about that work when none else getting in the way but work yep. you know yep. like it wasn't nothing else like that and how do you feel like what the practices are now compared to what you what you went through like last year you feel like it's a breeze honestly I feel like college is harder than than what the WMA, WMA practices are like yeah the W for me ain't nowhere and I tell anybody this, if anybody now would have got drafted back then because we still had those strong vets in the league, mm -hmm. it would be tough for a lot of people. I mean, you could just look at the transfer protocol, the portal right now, the transfer portal. Yep. Like the amount of mental toughness you had to have to even persevere or get through anything, I don't think it, 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 it don't even compare to right now like yeah. right now everybody's skate walking to me like it'd it be almost a shame because I just like the amount of stuff I went through to get to where I am like nobody will ever understand because yeah. you had the vets that led that way it was never nothing easy now you can't even say nothing because people think you like coming at them sideways when it's like really just trying to build you up to be better yeah. you know like it's really strange right now Tough love type yeah yeah, like it's really crazy how it is right now. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask you honestly later on in the in the episode, but I feel like that's perfect. Like this with this generation compared to yours that you were going through your your rookie year versus now, you just think that it's it's completely different. It's a completely style of play. Well, how do you feel like the play is like compared compared to y'all? Do you think it's softer? Um, I think I definitely think it's softer, but I definitely think the league has become like a positionless league now. Yeah, I was just telling somebody like, that. So when I came in the league, we had fives. Like we're giving the ball to they straight dominate on that block. Like we had true four and five players. We didn't have no tweeners. We didn't have a person that was a four that's playing a five. Like it was strictly, you had the strict fives, like strictly fives. And now I just think the league is just like positionless and, Every like ticky tack call is just like man. It it when you was brought up back when they let little stuff go. Now you just be like man. It's just point is that's why sometimes I I kind of like Europe because they actually let us play over there yeah. whether we want to play or not. Like yeah. they actually let us get it down and dirty. And then I mean obvious fouls they really call. Although they miss them here too. Mm -hmm. But like we actually like like they actually let you hoop over there. And I yeah. just think. Today's world and generation, we don't hoop like that because yeah. everything is a foul. Everything. <laughs> Literally All everything. Touch. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. Sheesh. Yeah. It's I can imagine how how different it is for you to have been playing at that time versus playing now for you to be able to see both and experience both. Oh, it's, it's just, completely different. Yeah. That's Way crazy. different. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well. You finish your Detroit Shock season, the end of it. Um, what was that transition like for y'all to go from Detroit to Tulsa for the whole Awful. team? Yeah. Awful. I think that's why a lot of people was just like, they don't want to play no more. People retired. I got one. I requested a trade just yep. because I couldn't take it. Like, and I don't think it had anything to do with the city. Although, you know, that's when all them outbreaks start happening. I think it was more like it just wasn't a right feel for nobody that was in Detroit. Like, the coaching staff was different. Like, the team was different. It was just a, a – a, it just wasn't a right feel for anybody. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just think it was a big transition of, like, what the hell is really going on. Yeah. It was like an eye-opener, if anything. So, yeah. it, was, it was it wasn't good for me. Um, I don't like to speak on organizations and how it could have been better. I just think it would have been better if we would have stayed in Detroit. And I think our team was good there. Like, it was kind of a blow when we all found out we had to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, the last team to do that was, what, San Antonio? And I honestly couldn't imagine being on the team – and having to up and leave everything, leave the fans, leave the atmosphere, even the basketball right. could different because Tulsa struggled for a while while they were exactly, in Tulsa. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Terrible. And I think it was just the structure and trying to put the pieces together. And when you 
feel like you already was a part of the pieces being together. It was just like, for what, you know? So you requested that trade to Indiana. And what was your- I just requested a trade. Honestly, I didn't even know I was going to go to Indy. Yeah. Oh, you okay. You just requested a trade. Yeah. Which is very bold. I I could never. (laughs) I was like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so you so you requested that trade, um, and it landed to be Indiana. What were your initial thoughts when you was like, okay, I'm I'm going to Indiana, like what the atmosphere was like when you first got there? How was catch like welcoming you in? Shit, sure. when I when they told me out, it was crazy because when I got traded, we was playing Indy, mm-hmm. so I had to go from the home locker room to the visitors locker room quick. <sighs> That's yes, crazy. Girl, it was so crazy. I was like, "Ain't no way this just happened." But when I got there, Catch was so like welcoming. Katie, Tammy Sutton Brown, Ebony Hoffman, they were so welcoming to me. Like, we want you here. We know you can do this. We know what you can bring to this team. We look forward to this. Just give it your all. Just work hard. Everything else will fall into place is exactly what Cash told me. And I was like, cool. My first year was shaky the year I got traded because I was just like, it was my second year, still trying to figure the league out. Not everybody know what I can do, yeah. how you got to bounce back from a good rookie year. Um, so Catch helped me, and then shit, Indy became home. Like, you that still final call it year, home. Still calling home. Yeah. Still calling home. After that second, my second year, um, when I got there, my third year, it, everything was on the rise. I was improving, and I became an all-star there, most improved one. Like, it, it really became home for me, and I think that was because of, like, our um, front management. Like, mm. management from top to bottom was good. So, I think everybody did a part on making sure that whoever was on that team felt like it was home. So, it was cool for me. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, like, what was the difference between y'all's championship season, like, in 2012 versus, like, the teams you've, you've played with? Because you've made playoffs 11 times. Every year, yeah. yeah. Like, I just felt like the chemistry, and this was with us with Detroit, too. It just We just fell short to a better Indiana team in the yep. series yep. when we lost. But I just think the way we, like, bonded, the way we clicked, the way we had each other back, the way we – then take shit personal. We, a motherfucker tell you, box out, rebound. We like, nigga, you ain't boxing out? Like, nah, box out and rebound. Yeah. Like, it was that type of trust that we had in each other that made it so much better to get along with. Like, yeah. I know if I get beat, you got my back. Or if I know I get beat, middle you helping me middle. Somebody else got me on the weak side. Like, it was just like a trust factor that we all had. And honestly, I give kudos to Catch for leading the way because she leaded us in a way I've honestly never been led. Like she yeah. really was a version of talk to talk, walk to walk. Like I'm going to show you by working hard and giving my all every single day. And when you see a leader like that coming in as like a Ricky third year player, you like, uh, she ain't just out here capping. Like she really for show about this and shit. I think that's just triggered down to all of us. And we just all bought in and yeah. Shit, our bum was crazy. Like, and we didn't even have to hang with each other every day. Mm. It was just some shit we just put with on the court. And then yeah. off the court, we just started bonding. So it made it better. Yep. So that's that that's the only difference, honestly. Yeah, that's huge. I think the, the trust factor is absolutely huge. I think that's what most championship teams have is that trust. And it's hard to yeah, build. If you don't got you trust, it, yeah, it don't it don't even matter how ta- how much talent, how much of niggas that is go get us. Yep. Like, if you can't trust that, if I get beat, you got my back, or if I got on middle, we can work on X and out yep. or my weeks. Like, you, it was just the trust we had. Like, all of us, like, really was like a rubber band. Mm. Like, it was Good crazy. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we really yeah. was like, you pull one way, you best believe that other side was waiting for you and help. Cause at the time, yeah. we had defense for three seconds. So we could sit in the paint and help oh, out with each that. other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so it was yeah. like different for us. Like, so for me, it was yeah, the trust. If you got trust, nothing else matter for sure. Yeah. And another important factor you mentioned was front office, like having a good management, like that to be understand able to the control. game, yeah. that understand how to put shit into place. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was perfect. Very important. Very important. Yeah. yeah. I don't think a lot of fans think of that. I think they think of a lot about the X's and O's and the coach, but the 
the whole organization is so important to build a championship team. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, you left Indiana and it's time for your New York days. How was it like being able to be able to play for a bill again? It was amazing, actually. I, and I think I just put my trust in because he drafted me Yep. in Detroit. I was like, this man took the, the bid on drafting me my rookie year. Just all, you know what I'm saying, film and come in and watch me play. Why not give him, you know, a try? Even though, he, you know, during our season in Detroit, he left to do and try to get a bigger, you know, job in the NBA, which, shit, I want to hang the move. Shit, yeah. if you feel like you're an NBA coach, go for it if it's mm-hmm. available. But um, just playing with him in New York was, it was dope as fuck because just playing in the garden was unbelievably good. Like, I don't think... A lot of people understand how epic the garden is if you've yeah. never played or even been or visited. Uh, so, like, just playing in the garden and, like, just having fun and just being a part of it. Like, when you visit, when I was visiting the garden, yeah, you get that love and hate because they hate you because you playing against the Liberty. Yep. But, like, when you build, like, that fan base that really fuck with you, like, it was dope for me. So playing for Bill and like being familiar with him and him put me in positions to be great, it was like perfect for me. I had a dope ass time in New York. Love okay. New York. That's what's up. Love New York. Yeah, I think that's one of your iconic days. I mean, along with Indiana, of course, because you won a championship. But I also, when I think about things else, I also, I think New York basketball. I love New York. Yeah, for sure. I just, I think the teams he was building there was almost a similarity of what we had in um, Detroit. Mm, so yeah. it made it better for me because I'm like, all right, you building it with some go-getters like I had in Detroit. Yep. So it was really like lit. Who were some of your teammates in, in New York? Of course, Tina was Shit. there. Yeah, I had um, Piff, Swin Cash, Tanisha Wright, mm. um, Lindsey Harden was there, Bria Hartley, Kia, um, Boy, shout out to my dog Boy, who's yeah, pregnant we, right now. That's my dog. We compete against um, each other. Uh, Pac twelve. Yeah, all now, day. That's a dog. Yeah. That's a dog right there. Is, yeah, I already yeah. know. Yeah. Um, who else was on my team at the time? Yeah, that was that was it. Like the OGs, OGs was Tanisha and Swin. Yep. They was the OGs, OGs, and everybody else was like <clears throat> the newer generation. Oh, Lindsey Harden was there too. So like I, I just like, love when you list your teammates. <laughs> I'm like, man, I, man my teammates was so, funny as fuck with legend. the names, right? Yo, <laughs> I love it. I crazy. Love it. I played with some good ones. So yeah, New York was New York was lit. And I think having Tanisha there too brought out a lot of dog and people because mm. you know Tanisha is a go getter. Yep. With the long socks. About that defense. Hell yeah. So <laughs> she was already like, I don't care who you is, I'm bringing it out to you. So yeah. I Shout out to T, man. Shout out to T doing a good job with the dream, too. Yes, she is. Bringing that, that culture down there, man. Yep. The they show. To, and they about to make the playoffs, so shout out to them. And it's, it's been that really what cool. I'm saying? They, yeah, they look like I'm they enjoy playing for her, so that's, that's really cool. I, I, I'm proud of T. Like, I already knew she was the head coach in the making, just how she used to coach us on the court. Mm. So, like, for her to do, like, and be successful with the dream, like, is dope as hell for sure. That's what's up. And even swim, man. Shout out to swim too with the, the Pelicans living Max. big in the front office, Max. man. Yep. Legends right there, Hall of Famer. Just yeah. being with them, like it was good for me in New York. I can't yeah. even cap. It was good for me there. Yeah. All right. New York was amazing. Um, let's talk a little bit about your 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 latter years in the league. Um with you playing with all these legends and having them as vets, how did you feel like when you became a vet, when you became that vet, like that legendary vet, how did you feel like you had to act? Like you feel like you had to be like that from that Pearson type, that that tough type, or do you feel like you kind of had to adapt to the times of the generation and becoming a little bit more nurturing as a vet? I think for me, it was a little mixture of both. Like, obviously, yeah, I'm going to show you, like, I ain't no pushover, but I ain't no type of person that's trying to bully you neither yeah I just want the best out of you I want you to succeed but I ain't I ain't we ain't here to be bullshitting either I want you to work hard like I was always the like even now I'm the vet like 
if we're gonna be in here for these two hours, an hour and 30, let's just get out all the hour and 30. I'm not gonna change who I am or what I like to do and who I like to hang with because I like to have fun. I like to have, you know, go out. But yeah. when it, when we step into them lines, all that going out, that goes out the window. And I prepare myself, you know, for that type of, you know, stuff. So like, you know, I, I hate when these vets, like certain vets get to a position where they just try to be strict on people. Like you can't do this. Yes, you can do this. Because at the end of the day, if you're coming in here to do your job, can't nobody tell you what to do outside of these courts. Thanks. You feel me? So for me, when I'm like, to this day still, like being a vet, that's all I preach. Like, I don't care what you doing outside of these courts. I ain't in your business. You ain't in my business. But like, we got practice. We got travel. We got a game. I expect you to give you 100% when that time, for, you know, for yep. me to so. So like for me now, it, it's just it just became where, yeah, you got to adapt to the time because people ain't with all that tough love type of yeah. stuff no more. So it's like, it's tough. You got to pick like a gray line with that because like you got some people that love it and then you got some people that hate it. Yes. So you just got to pick the right people or, you know, get the vibe of who tolerates and who don't and just adapt, honestly. And I think for me, it's just an adapting moment, but I ain't going to change who I am either. I like to have fun, yeah. but I, I'm also about my business too. So if you know me, anybody gonna say, yeah, she like to have fun, but on that court, she gonna give you her all too. And like, will. you can never doubt her giving her energy and her all through everything. Like, yeah. that's gonna happen. So for me, it's a little bit of both, but I enjoy it because as long as you get the respect, all that other shit really don't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I respect God. you, you respect me. We ain't got nothing else to talk about. If you do your job, I do my job. We cool with my books, so... I think a lot of people get that twisted between like being that bully and uh, you don't gotta be like that. It, it don't serve its purpose. Yeah. And, like do yourself, you know? So, I mean, for me, that's how I adapt. It. It's just adapting to time, but don't lose sight of yourself neither. Facts. For me, I feel like it's been tougher to, to transition to the vet role because I feel like Sometimes I still feel like a young, like I'm one of the younger players. Me too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's why I said I ain't changing who I am because I yeah. still feel young. Like I like to do what I like to do, but like we in between these lines, we in between these lines because I'm still doing my job. So I, I get you on that. Like yeah. it definitely is a hard, like a hard pill to, to, to choose between, but I think it's easy when you know you, when you true to yourself, and you know what you bring, it ain't really hard because you know what you can do. You can be serious and you can have fun. Thanks. Beautiful combo. <laughs> Shit, right. And that's why, and that's I, can why give, I can have some you party are. fun, but I'm, nigga, when we step between this court, yep. and all that he he and her on is out the windows until we get back off the court. Then, I, hey, we can go do whatever. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> We do whatever after that. Yes, <laughs> about that action, boss. Uh, no For Z, we, we gonna go to a hookah spot. No, no matter what city we in, no matter what Listen, country we, we gonna in, find something to do. We gonna find some. <laughs> Always. Even in Tulsa, we finding something to do. God damn it. <laughs> we gonna have a good time. You we at the hotel having a party, turning that bit. We having a good time. I love it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, last uh, question, just going into um, overseas mode, like, what has been the, the biggest challenge for you playing overseas? I mean, you've done it for 11 years. You've, you've been on the grind for Turkey. Is, is, do you feel as though there's a challenge for you now when you go out there? Or do you feel like it's home or you, it's, and you're comfortable with it? Honestly, for me, one, I do think it's home. But I think the only challenge for me is staying consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, after you have a good year, a lot of people can get complacent yeah. and chill because you have one good year. But for me, as you get one, as you get older in age, these, you know, young ballers ain't getting slower. They're getting quicker. They get more athletic. So for me, I think the challenge is you just got to stay consistent in your craft and like, really be in tune to your flaws and your goods. Yeah, you can pound your goods, 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 but if your bad still outweighs the goods, your goods is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just honestly, even this season, just like 
I know how the best season last year coming off averaging 30 the year before. Yeah. Um, and it was due because a lot of circumstances in the situation and it is what it is because you can never dwell on it. I can only get better from it. And, you know, this off season, I prided myself on being way better than what I was last year because it got in the way of who I really was. Mm -hmm. So like, for me, I just think like, staying consistent with your craft and your game outdoes any challenge you can ever like encounter with anything you know what I'm saying so yeah. for me that's all that really mattered I feel it I feel yeah, it that, I, I, yeah. I, I love that because as as a, a vet and someone who's who's been in the league like of course you want consistency and that's huge, but it's, it, I love how you said like, you want to be better. Like you are constantly trying to improve yourself. Even right. you're going into, what year are you going to as a, as a pro? Right. Uh, 12. You're 12. Going into well, year 12. 13, 13. 13. No, 13. Yeah. Lucky number 13. Going to 13. year 13. You still trying to go into improve yourself and, and show like who Javante Zellis is. And I, exactly. I absolutely love that. No matter how old you are, like you can instill I'm always yourself. on that. Yep. yep. I'm always on. I still got more to prove. Like, I mean, I won a WNBA championship, won a Euro League championship. Like, a lot of niggas ain't even crossed winning a Euro nope. League or a WNBA. So, like, yeah. even after all of that, I'm still like, it's more I could still be better at. Yep. And I'm going to get there and I'm going to work my ass off every single day. Every day I get up at five o'clock because I got workouts from six to eight. Just so I could be great to outdo anybody else that's self doubting me. I don't yeah. give a damn because I ain't gonna never self doubt me because I know what mm. I bring. But yeah, yeah man, if it, it, and I think a lot of people lose sight of that when they have a successful year. Yeah. And then that's when you see a lot of injuries. You see a lot of people numbers is dropping because they ain't they ain't consistent on their craft. Yeah. And I, I I learned that like sometimes we can get caught up in blind side and mixed in but like if you stay consistent on your work none of that shit matters really thanks thanks well, i lied one more question because i think all the fans want to know and i think um because they didn't see you in the league this year and and, and everyone's wondering what's what's shivante zealous up to so so what's next for you z what what can the people see out of you coming soon the next time they see me is gonna be busting people ass i'm gonna tell you that much um talk your talk so yeah, me being not in the, me not being in the league this year, I think was a blessing from God. I was actually able to work with my body, my game, my eating habits. Um, just did a whole transformation on like my mind, body, and soul. Honestly, yeah. um, just detox from a lot of stuff that kind of deterred me from like, you know, just how when you get in the mode of just being lazy and don't want yeah. to do it, like. But I really think this year um, overseas really motivated me this season to go probably the hardest I ever went in my career. So, yeah, um, yeah when they see me next time, it's going to be doing what I did the year before last, and that's giving 30-plus on I niggas, hands down. I love it. Talk your talk. I'm excited for, for you, so. Thank, Thank you. Bird, Thank you for bird. being on. Of course, I have one last question for you that is not okay. part of your question. It's my favorite question of the podcast. It is, what is your craziest overseas experience? You've played overseas all around for years. Um, I mean, I think I got, I mean, I got a favorite memory. And I, I mean, my craziest is when I first came overseas and it was Turkey. Best of times, your old, your old team. Man, I went over there and you know the language is crazy. Yes. So I'm at Burger King trying to order some shit. And I'm like, they speaking to me in Turkish, and I'm like, wait, what? Like, what you talking about? And they like, you know, telling me, and they I was like, so what I gotta pay? I'm used to dollars. They talking about lira. What the fuck is a lira? <laughs> So I'm like, hey, man, I ain't got no lyrics. Can you, I asked the general, the manager who came and get me, you gonna have to pay this bill. I ain't got no goddamn lira. I'm used to dollars where I'm from. And I think the weirdest, like, that was the weirdest moment for me because I'm like, you know, you get that broken English and then you get people that literally don't speak it. So they mm -hmm. talking about some, man, 
narcissist and I'm looking at them like, excuse me? <laughs> like, what? I don't even know what you're saying right now. But I'm going to take this um double cheeseburger menu. <laughs> I'm going to take this mug to go, though. And he's going to pay, all right? Like, that that was my, like, funniest memory, I think, just driving on the highway, looking at these signs, like, what the fuck? Are, where is they taking me, honestly? Like, where am I going? But it turned out to be, like, the best place I ever played, so. Yeah. yeah. It Shout is what it time. is, I guess. <laughs> Shout out to Best Shot. Shout out to Turkey. Shout out to UZ. That was an amazing story. I love that. Appreciate Thank you for being you. on, man. Birdie you had bird, some, some amazing stories, some amazing lessons that I think a lot of fans and I hope younger players can listen to and, and take in and, and be able to, you know, uh, use that, you know, with their career. So once again, thanks for being on. Where can we find you on social media so everybody can keep track of you uh, and what you're doing in life? Shoot. Appreciate you for having me, Bird. But all social media, as zealous one. I'm on IG, Twitter, Facebook that I barely use, and I barely be on IG or Twitter, but y'all still can give me a shout out and I can repost y'all anytime. <laughs> they left. We'll be shouting you out. We'll be shouting you out uh, in a Appreciate couple of days. You, Birdie Bird. <laughs> of course. And of course, if y'all want to follow me, you can follow me at Birds of Word underscore 24 on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow the podcast page on Instagram at birdseyeview.podcast, on Twitter, the number one, Bird's Eye View. Of course, like, review, all that good stuff. Um, thank you guys again for tuning in. This has been one of my favorite episodes, honestly. I love this. Thank you. Liddy, Liddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, y'all have a blessed week. Deuces. All right, thank you, Birdie Bird. <laughs>